everybody. This is Money Mom. Welcome back to the channel. I'll be uploading this video Thursday. I got a great idea from my friend Valentine over at Plenty of Money, and he talked about the misconceptions of be, being debt free, and it really got me thinking. As most of you know, our goal is for our family to be debt free by the end of this month. That means no mortgage, no consumer debt, no college loan, no car payment, nothing. So that's what we think is going to happen, and we've really buckled down the last six months to pay about $7,000 worth of debt off, So that which was the car, which is going to be great. The misconceptions of becoming debt-free, and I hear a lot of people say this, like, live like no one else, and, you know, basically you'll have all this freedom. That sounds fabulous. My personal opinion is I do not feel in our financial situation at our house, in our household, that that is the case. The reason being is, is in order, it's great to become debt free, but if you want to live the debt free lifestyle, what do you have to do? You have to remain debt free. And in order to do that, you have to prepare the two things that would cost us a lot of money that we're really going to have to buckle down and make sure to have good sinking funds for these are number one a car and number two a heating and air conditioning unit if something were to happen to those. So that's something in the next 60 to 90 days that I will be starting probably closer to 60 days for those items because I'm going to use the analogy of weight loss. As you know, and I'm a, a prime example, many people lose weight and they feel great. So we'll take somebody that loses 70 pounds. They weigh 200, they get down to 130, they look fantastic, everybody compliments them. Well, I don't mean to be negative, but about 90% of the people gain their weight back. Why? They go back to, to uh, you know, they go back to old habits. So a lot of people that become debt free could get back in debt. And the only way to prevent that is to make sure you stay on budget. Not that you can't have a little bit of fun. You can, obviously you can. But to have your sinking funds or savings, whatever you want to call them, prepared so that when the bigger expenses come up, you have money. Because I know a lot of people disagree with what I'm about to say. I personally don't think it's a big deal, and I've done this a lot. If you buy something on a 12 months no interest, I've done that with dishwashers, stoves, a door, computers. I've done that before, had no issue. But I always have that complete amount in savings, so I would never do it without that amount in savings. So I have done that before. The issue is, let's say you do that with your washer, and then all of a sudden you need a car. And oh, then the medical bills come, but you don't have a sinking fund for that. Oh, we need an air conditioner. So I feel like the better prepared our family is with savings and sinking funds in place and trying to live a more conservative, fiscally conservative lifestyle, the better we'll be. So as I am so excited for our family to become debt free the end of May, and I will be celebrating with all of you wonderful folks, I know that the real work will really begin. That means preparing for our future and preparing for anything that may come down the road. We not, might not be 100% prepared because nobody can prepare for everything, but we can at least work on being better prepared for anything. I'd love to know your thoughts on this. And as always, I'm going to link uh, Valentine's video on this subject below because he made a lot of excellent points. And I love to be positive. I love to be excited about being, being debt free. And I'm all for having a celebration. But I also want to be realistic too. So I really appreciate you guys watching. And stay tuned Friday for Free and Frugal Friday. Love you. Bye.